This is Army of Two, the 48th day on the seventh generation of home consoles, the PS3 and Xbox 360. And then this is Army of Two, the 48th day, the same game on the PSP. And it is different, very different actually, as you can see. The plot is exactly the same between the two versions. But as you can see, the home console version is a third person shooter, whereas this PSP version is an isometric one. So is it fun? Well, actually, yes, it is despite of some flaws, it is like a B-grade movie which is not supposed in design to be a masterpiece but still is really fun. Since it is an isometric shooter on the PSP, you might want to compare it with Killzone Liberation which is an amazing title but I would say please don't because this is not a game in the same league as Killzone Liberation. It is a much more arcadey title and like I said it is a B grade title when compared to Killzone because that game was really challenging it was a masterpiece which this game is definitely not. This game feels more like an isometric Call of Duty campaign you know you shoot tons of bad guys level after level. The game is short you know but you get the satisfaction of that arcadey shooting here and that is the best part of it you are definitely gonna enjoy the shooting and it is fun you get multiple boss fights against tanks armored vehicles fighter jets attack helos and whatnot there is a decent variety of enemies present as well some try to rush you and shock you others they just sit back and fire from cover while some others are heavy you know you gotta shoot them in the back to get rid of them then you got a buddy who's gonna revive you if you go down and you're gonna do the same for him there is a decent variety of guns present as well you've got a shotgun an energy rifle an assault rifle a basic assault rifle then you've got a minigun you've got a flamethrower a rocket launcher and all the weapons are upgradable you start with an assault rifle and a shotgun but after that you can buy weapons from this weapon dealer who's always present in the war zone somehow you can have two weapons of your choice on you at a time and the game also features power-ups for your guns which grants you increased damage apart from that the sound design is really good the guns sound absolutely amazing especially the shotgun the assault rifle the basic assault rifle and the minigun they sound particularly good then graphically also for an isometric PSP title the game looks really good the look of the two playable characters Rios and Salem reminds me of Gears of War because they look quite bulky Rios in particular looks absolutely huge I find they look quite funny and actually really like it the game is set in Shanghai China Rios and Salem are protagonists who are in China for an assignment are caught up in this terrorist attack on the city of Shanghai by a terrorist organization named the 48th Day Initiative led by a guy named Jonah Reed. So Rios and Salem are basically forced to fight through this terrorist occupied Shanghai in order to get out of the city. There is a decent variety of levels present in the game. You're gonna be fighting in the streets of Shanghai, on the rooftops of skyscrapers, you're gonna be fighting in a hospital, you're gonna be fighting in a zoo which is really interesting. You will be rescuing civilians along the way which gives you cash but you have to be careful because you can actually hurt the civilians if you accidentally shoot them. You are also gonna run into several NPC characters on your way and some of them are actually gonna join you for a while. An interesting thing about the game is that it gives you moral choices on several occasions actually like you want to shoot an NPC or maybe you want to spare his life and once you make the decision you get to see what happens in that person's life later on in a comic book kind of cutscene. So you get an idea whether your decision was a right one or a wrong one. An example of this is on a level you run into a security guard guarding a locker with some ammo in it and I made the decision to kill him but the cutscene reveals that he had a family, he loved them, he had kids and it was a bad decision. There is no cost for it but it is just like a moral thing. Another really interesting one was in a level where you get to play alongside an NPC character named Brezhnev and at one point he's about to kill a girl and he offers you some money in order to walk away. You can take the money or you can decide to save the girl by killing Brezhnev. So I decided to save the girl and kill Brezhnev but the cutscene later on reveals that the girl was actually pretty evil. She was an agent of some sort and she had killed his kid and he was basically looking for revenge on her which really made me feel bad. So yeah this really adds a cool moral layer to the whole fun gameplay and really adds to it you know and a big one is right at the very end where you get the choice of either killing the main villain or your own partner which was really shocking for the first time when i played the game it was long ago but I've recently replayed it and I've really enjoyed the whole choice thing so it really adds to the gameplay and makes it 
even more fun. It also obviously adds to the replayability factor of the game because you would want to check out the other choices and their outcomes. If I remember correctly, the game also has an unlockable skin from the game Tante's Inferno, a game which was also available on the PSP and was fantastic by the way. One last thing about the gameplay that I wanted to mention is that you get the ability to command your AI controlled buddy. You can command them to be passive or aggressive and you can command them to hold position or follow you. Early on in the video I said that the game does have some flaws so now let's talk about them. The very first one is your AI controlled teammate, your buddy. At times they can get stuck in the environment and it usually happens when you are moving from one area of the level to the other and you are at a distance from your teammate and moving really fast. In order to bring them along with you you have to be kind of slow you know because at times if you are fast and you are at a distance they can get stuck in the environment in the previous area of the level which you cannot access anymore and you are stuck in the newer area all alone and there are certain enemies whom you cannot take alone because you have to shoot them in the back and you need your teammate in order to draw their attention so that you can go around and shoot them in the back and if you get down you don't have your buddy to revive you which is the only way to come back when i said moving fast i meant rolling there is a rule mechanic present in the game which is really helpful in combat and really fun too makes the game really fast paced and twitchy especially if you're using a shotgun like i do but it is like rolling into a newer area of a level when usually this thing happens where your teammate gets left behind because you were way too fast. Then the second thing are the controls which are effective but weird initially because they are very unusual. You aim and shoot using the face buttons like triangle you look up and shoot up square you look left and shoot left circle you look right and shoot right and x you shoot down and look down and to shoot diagonally you press two buttons in the direction you want to shoot and it works really well but it feels weird constantly you know it doesn't feel natural and it uh, is something that feels unusual and it is a constant feeling so i had to mention it it is not exactly a negative because it works surprisingly well but it feels awkward you know something about it just feels a bit off so i had to point it out the third thing is the enemy ai which is not fantastic i mean they are okay but at times they can feel a bit stupid the regular enemies i would say they rely more on quantity than on quality of soldiers but the boss fights are fine and there are multiple levels of difficulty present as well so not exactly a big issue since you can choose the hard difficulty and in general the quantity of enemies in my opinion kind of makes up for the quality so yeah it's fine overall you are gonna be shooting tons of bad guys so no issues they are just not gonna be very intelligent which was worth mentioning then finally the last one which personally bugs me the most and it is the fact that the game has no manual reload at all your character automatically reloads his gun once it's empty or when there is not much happening around you are gonna see a reload even on a half clip but you cannot do it whenever you want to which is something that drives me crazy i just just don't like it i mean you kind of get used to it as you keep playing the game but it is something that you wish was not this way. What matters is the gameplay which is really fun. Tons of bad guys to shoot, lots of guns with upgradability, cool boss fights, good level variety, decent looks for a PSP game and a really nice sound design. The voice acting for the characters is decent too. The conversations between Rios and Salem are always very interesting. The shooting itself is really fun. You can choose to take cover and pop out and shoot or you can use a shotgun and rush the enemies by rolling around like I do and have a ton of fun. The game becomes really fast paced that way. In one level you have to rely on stealth for a bit too. The game also features a riot shield and you can perform a bang attack with it as well. You can play either as Rios or Salem and you unlock character skins for the character you play as. As I'm recording this I can see there are two unlockable skins present for both the characters so yeah decent amount of replayability and with those moral choices it really adds up. The game also features multiple endings so surprisingly fun little package here. I've actually lost my my original save file for the game from my PSP but uh, from the shadow, the dark shadow here for the locked skins I can tell you that one of the skins for Salem is definitely Dante's Inferno and the other one I don't know but for Rios one is Dead Space for sure. The second one seems to be Jonah Wade the villain from this very game. I might be wrong but I think I remember playing as Jonah Wade for Rios the skin is Jonah Wade but the second skin for Salem I don't know what it is. This character skin has Mohawk 
hairstyle, the mohawk haircut, which I don't remember, but others I have kind of figured out. So yeah, decent amount of stuff to unlock and a really solid game. It's not a legendary title, not a masterpiece, but a really fun shooter. It's all about shooting the bad guys and having a blast. So if you enjoy those kind of games, definitely do check it out. It's an isometric game, but it is worth a shot without doubt and a really fun package like I said. Please do leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out.